Elon Musk started Neuralink in 2016 with the aim of putting microchips in people's brains. To put it more precisely, Neuralink is working on a technology called BCI or Brain Computer Interface and it can help our brains control computers. BCI will empower humans to carry out actions through their thought, which is why the first of Neuralink's goals is to study and treat neurological disorders. However, that's only the first step. With time, Musk hopes that the technology will evolve to a point that it will even save memories and let people revisit them like photo albums or computer videos. Neuralink isn't the only company pursuing these goals. They have a very worthy opponent in Synchron, a brain data transfer company based out of Brooklyn. In fact, Synchron has just scored a major win over Neuralink by becoming the first human trials of the BCI technology. I'll talk more about that later, but first, let's dive into what BCI really is, how it works, and how it has evolved over the years. At its core, BCI works as a device connected to the human brain that allows a computer to read a person's thoughts and turn them into actions like typing, pressing buttons, or using input devices to play video games. And it all happens due to the complexity of the human brain. We know the brain is the most complex biological structure ever. Despite hundreds of years of research, scientists are still struggling to figure it out. But of course, there has been immense advancement in the expanding field of neurosciences. The human brain generates electrical signals through complex chemical reactions that take place continuously as thoughts are being processed. BCI harnesses these electrical signals and sends them to a piece of software that decodes these signals and turns them into an input for the computer. Now, Elon wants to use this tech to change the way we live. However, it is important to note that implanting primates with neural brain interfaces to make them control objects on screens isn't a novel phenomenon and has been around for decades. Neuralink simply brought the technology back and got everyone excited and interested in its massive applications yet again. Scientists have long been interested in how something like this works and have made some major breakthroughs over the years. The first demonstration of real-time cursor control was made using monkeys back in 2002. By 2008, a monkey had learned to control a robotic arm in three dimensions and used it to feed itself. Four years later, a successful test of a brain controlling a robotic arm took place, and by 2017, a human being controlled a cursor mentally to type out words and sentences. All these tasks required just a few of the brain's neural electrodes. However, Neuralink changed the game in 2019 when it presented us with a pig named Gertrude, who had a wireless implant that monitored signals from more than 1,000 neurons. A year later, Gertrude was embedded with a chip that could accurately predict the positioning of Gertrude's limbs when walking on a treadmill. According to Musk, the pig had been living with a chip in her skull for two months. In April last year, Neuralink sent out the most exciting video yet of the BCI in action. This demo included a monkey that plays a video game using just his brain in return for some banana smoothie rewards. The animal, named Pager, sent mental commands wirelessly to a computer. Elon Musk tweeted about the breakthrough and has since targeted 2022 as the year for full-blown human trials. By early January, Neuralink was looking for a director to oversee the company's first clinical human trials. According to Elon, it was difficult to have nuanced conversations with monkeys and BCI devices and humans were the way to go. This takes me back to Synchron and how they came up with a major surprise just recently. The company began its first human trials in the US last month and remains the only company to get FDA approval ahead of Neuralink. Their BCI device, called Stentrode, will be implanted in six patients as part of the trial. Now, this may come as a surprise if you only follow development in the US, but the fact is that Synchron has already run similar successful trials in Australia. The Australian studies demonstrated the technology to be safe in four patients who were monitored for one year. No adverse health impacts, disabilities, or deaths were recorded and the participants even ended up using the Stentrode system unsupervised in their homes. They used it to send text messages, emails, and even conducted online shopping with it. 
Stentrode is a paperclip-sized scaffold made from a flexible alloy called nitinol. It is dotted with electrodes which can record neural signals in the brain. The device is implanted in a blood vessel right above the motor cortex, a region of the brain that is responsible for movement. The company described it as a minimally invasive procedure, which involves a small incision in the neck similar to the insertion of stents in the heart. Once implanted, it translates brain activity into a standardized digital language and allows patients to complete everyday tasks. Just through their thoughts, participants can use external devices to do many of their everyday chores. Synchron's clinical trial is approved by the FDA and the early feasibility study is being funded by the NIH. If this study concludes successfully, it will open up a world of possibilities for the Stentrode brain implant. It can become the first BCI device to be sold as a commercial product aimed at paralysis patients to regain their independence and have more control of their life. Many observers are seeing this as a setback for Neuralink and Elon Musk, the reason being that Musk is usually the first to drive innovation and the first to get approvals because of his advanced ideas. This will also pinch Neuralink because one of its former presidents is now invested in Synchron. Max Hodeck had been one of the founding members of Neuralink but announced his departure in May 2021. A few months later, in February 2022, Hodak wrote in a blog post that he was now serving as an advisor to Synchron and had invested in the company as well. Hodak called for everyone to not see it as a setback for Neuralink, but his departure and the following investment in a direct rival raised a few eyebrows. However, the fact is that BCI is a vastly unexplored field as of now with a million possibilities. So this isn't a knockdown, but another possibility for greater exploration of the field. And late trials may not be a bad thing for Neuralink either, because this will give them a chance to study already existing data and be better equipped. For Neuralink, the first human trials are not far away. The firm is better funded as they raised $205 million last year, compared to the $70 million raised by Synchron. Neuralink also remains on the lookout for a clinical trial director, which means they're sticking to their plans for human trials this year. With better funding and data to go on, the scope for Neuralink's BCI device will also be much bigger. Neuralink's mission isn't just to treat brain-related ailments. Their ultimate goal is to create a whole brain interface capable of more closely connecting biological and artificial intelligence. The end game here is to create a network of tiny electrodes linked to your brain that would allow us to communicate wirelessly with the world. There are also some operational differences between Neuralink and Synchron brain-computer interfaces. While Synchron's device is placed inside the neck, Neuralink will place a chip directly into the skull. The company is also developing a surgical robot to implant the device within a patient's brain. Neuralink also promises a more compact and potent device that would likely require the removal of a part of the patient's brain. This device is called a link, which has thousands of threads connected to certain neurons in the brain. Each thread is 20 times thinner than a human hair. The link is roughly the size of a coin and is connected to an external computer by Bluetooth for continuous communication. The future of BCI and Neuralink does sound promising, but the scientific community has called it Elon Musk's biggest challenge to date. He is making rockets to take NASA to the International Space Station, and he is building spaceships to start a civilization on Mars. However, mainstreaming brain-computer interface may just need the most commitment. As of now, less than half of Americans are convinced with the technology, and an even lesser number would consider having a computer chip surgically implanted into their brains. But installing it or making it available for a select few will open up a different can of worms. Other detractors object to the use of BCI on ethical grounds. They fear that if the human brain can be connected to a machine, it will become vulnerable to being hacked and controlled by others. On the other hand, Elon Musk remains sold on its utility. He wants to restore some agency and capability to people with conditions like Parkinson's disease or schizophrenia. And as we move forward, he also sees BCI as the antidote to the increased threat of AI. If you have been following Elon Musk, you would know that he has his concerns over deep artificial intelligence. 
He remains worried about what he calls a singularity, an intelligent machine with autonomy that can behave like human beings but in a much more organized manner. For him, this would be a dangerous situation, which is why we should merge human intelligence and artificial intelligence as soon as possible. According to Musk, Neuralink was intended to address the existential risk associated with digital superintelligence. We will not be able to be smarter than a digital supercomputer, so therefore, if you cannot beat them, join them. Whatever the reasons, the future of BCI is exciting. With Synchron's human trials now in motion, we may see a step towards wider adoption of the technology, at least in the medical field. And this is a cause to be optimistic. There are more than 5 million people in the United States with paralysis and hundreds of millions more around the world. This would be a great starting point to bring them back to life. Maybe we can look at it this way. Stephen Hawking communicated by using a device that detected the movement of his cheeks and synthesized his speech. A BCI would have gone directly into his brain and given him not just the ability to speak, but also to control prosthetic devices and computers. Maybe we could have revealed much more, and maybe Neuralink will help uncover the next Stephen Hawking.